It's time to wake up, Chicago. It's time to wake up. It is time to turn to Jesus Christ before it's too late. Before it's too late, your life is so short. Eternity never ends. When your physical body dies, your soul will continue on forever and ever in one of two places, heaven or hell, peace with God or under the wrath of God, burning in flames of fire, never ending, excruciating torment. How many people are going to warn you about that today? Well, I'm going to warn you. Jesus Christ warned people. He said, don't fear those who can kill the body, but fear the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Right now you live in a city that mass murders children who are living in the first months of life. And everybody's okay with it. Most people are okay with it. They continue to be at peace with it. And they show that they don't love God. They show that they're in danger of hell because they either outright support it or they are silent when it happens. They neglect justice and mercy, the very thing that Jesus Christ rebuked the religious leaders for doing. But Jesus Christ harshly rebuked the religious leaders who did all the rituals, but they neglected the weightier matters of the law. Justice, mercy, faithfulness. That's what Jesus Christ rebuked people about. But what are people doing today? The very same thing. Going to church on Sunday, claiming to be Christians, claiming to love God, but the rest of the week, ignoring mass murder in Chicago. Ignoring children who desperately need their voices because they don't have a voice. They don't have any defense. Have you been born again? Are you a true Christian? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you been born again? Does the Holy Spirit live inside of you? Has your lifestyle been changed? You need to ask yourself that. Jesus Christ said that unless you're born again, you can't see the kingdom of heaven. Unless you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, changing your lifestyle, you're not going to go to heaven. You're going to go to hell. The things that you do in your life indicate whether or not you are born again. If you continue to watch pornography, that is an indication that you're not born again. If you continue to fornicate, that is an indication that you are not born again. If you continue in a self-centered lifestyle, refusing to love people, focused on yourself, consumed with lust and pride and greed and selfishness, that is an indication that you are not born again. Jesus Christ is the second person of the three-person God. The one that we celebrate at Christmas. What do we celebrate at Christmas? We celebrate God becoming a man. God coming into the earth as a man. And how did he do that? He became an embryo. At Christmas, we celebrate God becoming an embryo. It's mind-blowing, and yet people murder their own embryonic children in the city of Chicago. God entered the body of a young woman, and yet we murder children who are living inside the bodies of young women in the city of Chicago. How long, Chicago? How long will you spit in God's face? I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ came into the world to die for sinners, to take the punishment that they deserve. Jesus Christ came into the world to die as a blood sacrifice, to appease the wrath and justice of a holy, righteous God whose anger and wrath burns against sin. Because he's good, he does not let evildoers go free. He must punish. And yet, in his love and mercy, he decided to punish his son so that all those who put their faith in the son, they will no longer be condemned to the hellfire that they deserve, but instead they will have eternal life. They will have peace with God. They will be born again. They will, they will know God personally. And their lifestyle will reflect it. Their lifestyle will change so that they live in obedience to God. Loving children, no matter what they look like. Loving every person the same way they love themselves. That's God's command. Jesus Christ did not stay dead. Jesus Christ rose from death. He walked on this planet once more. And then he ascended into heaven to be a righteous representative on behalf of all those who put their faith in him. Because you cannot attain perfection through your own good works. God is perfect. We are not. 
no one can attain heaven through their own good works. God is perfect. You can't live in peace with a perfect God if you're not perfect. He does not tolerate sin. And yet, you can have a relationship with God if Jesus Christ, the righteous one, the God-man, bridges the gap between you and God and becomes your representative. The imperfect people need the perfect one, Jesus, to represent them so that they can have peace with the perfect God. That's how you can be saved from the wrath of God. That's how you can have eternal life. Eternal life is a relationship with God. That's what true life is. And that life begins now. Not when you get to heaven, it begins now when you repent and put your faith in Christ. When you're born again, that's when eternal life happens. Do you have eternal life? Do you know God? Do you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you? People are murdering their children in this city because they do not have the Holy Spirit. They are dead in their sin and they need to be raised to new life with Christ. Jesus Christ rose from death so that sinners can be raised to new life with Him spiritually. Because right now people are in a spiritually dead state. They're separated from God. They're living in rebellion against God and they cannot please God. The Bible says, the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. But Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one can have perfection. Nobody can reach perfection through their good works. No one can reach heaven through their good works. So many people are burning in hell right now because they trusted in themselves. They thought they could be good enough. They thought that God would accept them because they were a, quote, good person. I'm here to tell you today, no one is good. No one is good. The only one who is good is Jesus Christ who came to represent sinners, to die on their behalf, to rise on their behalf, and live on their behalf. That is good news today, but it's only good news if you repent. It's only good news if you decide to stop watching your pornography. It's only good news if you decide to stop having sex with somebody you're not married to. It's only good news if you decide to stop your lust and your pride and your greed and your selfishness. Reject all of that, throw it away, and decide to live in obedience to God in every area of life. Trusting in Him to save you. Trusting in Jesus Christ to save you. Not trusting in your good works to save you. When you truly believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior, you're going to love Him and you're going to obey Him because you love Him. If you truly believe that Jesus Christ is your King, then you're going to obey Him. Jesus Christ said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love Jesus Christ, you will obey Him. If you don't love Jesus Christ, you will not obey Him. Your love for God is reflected by your actions, by your lifestyle. If your lifestyle is one of fornication and pornography, lust, greed, pride, self-centeredness, you need to ask yourself, do I know God? Have I been born again? If your lifestyle is not about justice, if you don't care about the poor, the weak, the needy, and the oppressed, you need to ask yourself, have I been born again? Does the Holy Spirit live inside of you? God's heart is for justice. God wants you to seek justice and love mercy and walk humbly with Him. But you can't do that while you're ignoring genocide in your own city. You can't do that while you continue to ignore the victims of a literal holocaust in your own land. How long, Chicago? How long, Chicago? How long will children be mass murdered inside killing facilities in your city? While you ignore it, while you support it, that is rebellion against God. The blood is in the streets. The people of Chicago are covered in blood. The innocent blood cries out to God for justice. And oh, you should fear the justice of God. You should fear the vengeance of God. And you will be wise. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God is a fearsome God, and you should fear Him. Jesus Christ said to fear Him, because He's the one who has the power to throw you into hell. 
Well, how many Christians told you that today? How many Christians warned you about hell and told you to fear God because he can throw you into hell? Because that's what Jesus Christ told people. Are you going to live like Jesus Christ? Or are you just going to say you want to live like Jesus Christ? How did Jesus Christ live his life? He continually reached out to other people to help them to meet their physical needs. How are you living your life? So many people are consumed with greed. Consumed with the things of this world that, we, that they, they can't even take it with them when they die. All of these pleasures, all of these things that people chase after, all of this consumerism, it's going to pass away so quickly. Your life is so short. In 80 years, you're going to be underneath the tombstone, but your soul will never end. Your soul will continue in eternal torment because you chose the things of this earth over God, because you chose momentary pleasure. But I'm telling you today, no momentary pleasure is worth burning in hell for. The pleasures of this life are not worth burning in hell for. I'm here to tell you today, there is only one who can satisfy you. That is Jesus Christ. He is the living water. When you come to him and drink, you will never thirst. He is the bread of life. When you eat of him, you will never die. That's good news today. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. You can't find peace in the things that you buy. You can't find rest and satisfaction in the things that you buy. You can only find peace. You can only find satisfaction. You can only, only find true joy in Jesus Christ. Are you seeking first the kingdom of God? That's what Jesus Christ said. He said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Don't worry about how, how, you're going to be, how your needs are going to be met. First focus on the kingdom of God and God will meet your needs. But we have people who are consumed with greed. They don't want to live for God. They don't want to use their money to serve God. They want to use it on themselves. They want to use it on me, myself, and I. But God, if God has blessed you with money, that's not your money. That belongs to God. Everything you have belongs to God. How are you, how are you using what He has given you? How are you using what God has given you to steward? What are you doing with your life? Jesus Christ is going to come back and judge every single one of us. Every single one of us is going to have to answer. We will be judged. We will be judged. At the end of time, Jesus Christ is coming back. And what will you have to show when the Master comes back? What will you have to show for yourself when Jesus Christ comes back? What will you have done with the life that God gave you? Did you squander it on yourself? Did you dig a hole and throw your money in the hole? And refuse to use the gifts that God gave you? Your money was not given to you by God so that you can spend it on yourself. Your money belongs to God. How are you going to use it? If you're not using it for His kingdom, you need to think again. So many people are destroyed by love of money. They're destroyed by greed. They're destroyed by love of the things of the earth. They focus on trying to make themselves happy by gaining more and more things. Things that they cannot take with them when they die. Your life is so short. You should focus on building up treasure in heaven. That's what Jesus Christ said. He said, focus on building up treasure in heaven. How do you do that? You do that through your good works. You do that through obedience to God. God will reward you for obedience in heaven. Your good works are not going to get you into heaven, but once you're born again, your good works are gonna store up treasure for you in heaven. So that means that God wants you to sacrifice now. God wants you to sacrifice now. 
in this life, he says, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. He said in order to find your life, you have to lose it. Are you losing your life for Jesus Christ? Or are you continuing in the endless cycle of American consumerism, the endless cycle of frivolity and vanity? If you love anything more than God, you are practicing idolatry. If you love the things of this world more than God, you are practicing idolatry. You have a false God. Most people worship themselves. Most people live for themselves. They make themselves their highest authority. The highest authority for determining what is right, what is wrong, what is true, what is not true. Instead of obeying God's word and looking to God to be the standard, instead of serving God as God, they worship themselves as God. But I'm here to tell you today, you're not God. Your arbitrary opinions do not determine morality. And your self-worship is only going to get you thrown in hell. I'm showing you a victim of a holocaust that is raging on because people worship themselves and they sacrifice their children on the altar to their selfishness. Child sacrifice is rampant in Chicago because Chicago is full of people who are idolaters. They love themselves more than God. They don't obey God's commands. They show that they don't love God. They love their selfishness. They love their fornication. They love their sex without responsibility. And that is why they murder their own children. Kids are being murdered, Chicago. They're being murdered because people worship themselves instead of worshiping the one true God. If people worship the one true God, they would lay down their lives for their children instead of laying down their children's lives so that they can live the lifestyle that they want. God doesn't want parents to sacrifice their children. God wants parents to sacrifice for their children. Sacrificial love, like Jesus Christ showed us, by laying down his life, sacrificing himself, giving himself up to die as a blood sacrifice to appease the wrath and justice of a holy and righteous God. That's good news today. It is good news.